What is happening investors? It is your boy Jack and today we are going to be talking about the oil tanker stock that is not once again because some crazy stuff has been happening with this stock since my last video. It very briefly shot all the way up to $9. It is currently sitting back down at $6.29. And there's a lot of uncertainty as to why this is happening and what can be expected to happen next. You know, people who have shares in this company, should they be selling? Should they be riding the wave? Should they be buying more? Today, the plan is to speak about why this crazy price action has been happening. Why they shot all the way up to $9. What influenced that? Why they've come back down and are trading in the red pre-market today as well. Right before we get into it, guys, please just gently tap that like button for me. It helps me get seen by more people. Subscribe if you are new around here. We're just about 50 subs away from 2,000, which is crazy to be saying. And drop me a comment with your thoughts on that down below. Let's get straight into this, though, because it is a really interesting stock to be looking at right now, and there is quite a bit to cover. The very first thing we're going to speak about today is just the fact that there has been so much hype behind this stock and how that has affected their price. We're not going to speak about oil prices, supply and demand, their earnings or anything along those lines. We're literally just going to talk about peep. So just looking at the six month chart, you see these really small little bars down at the bottom. That's the volume of this stock that is being traded. Look at how much it has shot up just the last week or so. At market open every single day, this stock gets so much volume compared to what it has done in the past. So obviously a lot of people have just recently been put onto this stock and that is for two primary reasons that I know of. The first reason came eight days ago, April 22nd from Jeremy over on financial education when he made a video on these guys. Before Jeremy had even made this video, in fairness, the stock had started rallying upwards. That's obviously what got it on his watch list in the first place and it continued to do so. But once he made that video, it got a lot more aggressive. Obviously a lot of the masses, the likes of me and you on YouTube saw this video and we started looking into these guys a little bit more. Or else if you're silly, you just bought it entirely because Jeremy spoke about it. Jeremy makes a video, then the smaller guys like me make a video, and then an awful, awful lot of people end up having this guys on their watch list. And you know, at first glance, there is immense, immense short-term potential. So a lot of people would have bought this without putting too much thought in. And that is very clear to see. It continued to rally. Then it got to Friday and this happened. CNBC uploaded this video, Nordic American Tanker CEO. I have never seen such a strong market. Uploaded this video. It's a fantastic video. I watched the whole thing a couple of times, to be honest. The CEO is very charismatic, but... Basically, in this video, he explains just how much money they're making, how they're going to be increasing their dividends. He makes them sound like the best opportunity in the entire world. And what happened? This went up on the weekend, market open on Monday. It absolutely shot up pre-market and it continued to go up. And very, very briefly, this stock actually got all the way up to $9, only to very quickly be humbled and brought back down to $6.29 a share. So the very first reason I believe the stock saw such a massive drop is because the people who watched Jeremy's video, the people who watched the CNBC interview, they're already up anywhere from kind of 40 to 80% and they understand now after doing more research, it's not the best long-term investment and they want to run away with their profits. I mean, if you bought based off of Jeremy's video at 523 and you were lucky enough to be one of the few people who got to sell between eight and nine dollars, you just made a very, very tasty profit. If you sold at 850 off of Jeremy's buy, you would have made about 60% gains. In the stock market, on a yearly basis, a lot of us aim for, you know, 10 to 15% growth a year. So 60% in a matter of days is nothing to sneeze at. And as I said just a second ago, at first glance, this company has absolutely immense short-term potential. But the question is, are they a long-term hold? And these people, you know, they would have got excited at the start when they would have seen how well the company's doing, what the CEO was saying, what Jeremy's saying, the confidence that a lot of people have in this company. But then they may have gone and done their own research and realized this may not be for me. This may not be the kind of investment that I want to hold on to. And that's why I think we just saw that initial sell off. And that is one of the factors of why it very, very quickly fell from $9 all the way back down to $6.29. The next thing we have to speak about is oil. And we all obviously know what happened in regards to oil last week. It went negative. Prices of oil went negative because supply and demand is all out of whack. But we can see that the recovery has been very, very fast and very, very aggressive. As the price of oil goes up, these companies simply put won't need to store their oil as much so companies oil tanker companies like Nat aren't a necessity anymore and they definitely don't have all of the leverage in the world they definitely can't charge what they are right now right now Nat is charging seventy thousand dollars a day for one of its tankers there is no way they're going to be able to charge that when companies can actually just sell the oil that they're producing as well people's outlooks in regards to the economy open back up lockdowns being lifted is starting to get better. We're starting to get a lot more optimistic about what is going to happen next due to headlines like this that I may or may not have doctored ever so slightly. Early peak of data on Gilead, Rony boy drugs suggest patients are responding to treatment. So you can assume 
that the word in there was the word that shall not be said on YouTube. You're all also more than likely aware that Gilead have been running tests on, you know, vaccines and things of the like for the virus that's going around. Now, when the economy opens back up, oil prices are more than likely, in correlation, going to go back up. Right now, there's no, you know, planes flying, there's no cruises cruising, you're not driving to work, you're not driving across the country to see family who lives in different areas, you're just stuck in your house. You are not buying much oil, if any oil, whatsoever. So when the demand starts to come back, which will happen when the economy opens back up, when countries open back up, oil prices will go back up, and the demand for these oil tanker stocks inevitably will go down. And that is why, me personally, I don't like these companies because I am a long-term investor. I do see absolutely immense potential over the short term, but if I bet on these guys long term, it's almost like betting against the greater economy in the long term. And that would essentially make every single one of my other stocks somewhat invalid. Now I understand that it's not that simple, there's not a direct correlation between this company and oil price, but I'm just trying to make the picture very vivid and very clear. But look at the last month for the S&P 500, people are clearly getting more and more optimistic. We're going up and up and up. Yesterday my portfolio hit the green for the first time ever, since I began investing, for the first time ever my portfolio was in the green. There was a stage where I was down about 27, 28% and now we're positive. That's how much the market has rallied this last month or so. And with the market rallying, I know obviously there'll be arguments about all the low interest rates, about the Fed pumping money and etc. But come on, you can't argue that the general outlook isn't improving. Just because the outlook's improving doesn't necessarily mean that the economy is improving. But it is a promising sign that the economy will improve. And one more thing I want to have a look at, right, is how they performed during the Great Depression. Because this is something that we compare an awful lot of stocks to, you know, our general blue chip stocks. But I want to compare these guys. I want to see how these guys did during the Great Depression, okay? And let's just go back to 2007 through 2009, okay? So 2007, there was some nice growth going into it, you know, very nice growth. We see this dip an immense recovery, a big dip, a recovery, and it's been downhill ever since. So while the rest of the market was rallying up and up and up, these guys were too busy going down and down and down, and we can see that they stagnated down here for a long time. They had a very short rally, and then boom, they were all the way down to one and two dollars a share for literally years, literally years. It does not take a genius to have a look at this max stock chart and realize that it doesn't look the absolute best for a long-term investor. And I understand that past data isn't everything, and that is in a really unique position, but they were also in a really unique position back in the Great Depression, and look where that brought them. I don't wanna make it out like it's all doom and gloom, because as I said earlier on, there is absolutely immense short-term potential, and I'll be honest, there is most definitely long-term potential. I 100% completely and utterly understand why people would buy this company. I have toyed with the idea of it very, very heavily, especially after seeing the massive dip that it had yesterday. So let's get into some of, you know, the positives for these guys. As of right now, this moment in time, these guys are making an immense amount of money, especially for the money that they are used to making, okay? So they have 23 of these tankers that they're storing oil in. They are renting them out for $70,000 a day. They have an operating expense of $8,000 a day per tanker. That means every day in gross profit, they're looking at 1.426 million every single day. This is a company who already has quite a nice balance sheet. They're gonna be able to pay off all of their debt. They're gonna be able to pay a very attractive dividend. The CEO has already came out and said that. So from a performance point of view, it's absolutely incredible. A company that's gonna have essentially no debt, a company that is gonna be able to pay a very nice dividend, what's not to love? Let me just show you their dividend history for one, okay? When they do well, they pay a fantastic dividend. When they do poorly, they pay an absolutely terrible dividend. The last five years, negative 29% growth. The last 20 years, negative 11% growth. So you might get a really nice dividend for one, two, three months, maybe one or two years, but like if you're buying these guys for the dividend, don't. Just because a company pays a nice dividend doesn't mean it's a company that you should invest in and it definitely doesn't mean that that dividend is safe. Look at this for example, Royal Dutch Shell cuts dividend for first time since World War II. Nobody thought that they were going to be cutting their dividend, but here we are. It can happen to absolutely anybody. And just to show you the balance sheet really quickly, total current assets 129 million, total current liabilities 59 million, total assets 1 billion, and total liabilities 435 million. So in short and long term, they're already in a fantastic position. They're gonna be able to very, very, very easily pay off all of their debt now. They're gonna be in a fantastic position coming off the back of this. But it doesn't matter how good of a position you're in if the business simply is not there. And when oil is absolutely booming, the business may well not be there for these guys. Now a lot of people are speculating, they're wondering, should they get out now if they want a position or is this a fantastic time to get in? Is it gonna go back up to $9? Would it go to 10, 11, 12? 
Nobody knows, but I would be in no way surprised if at some stage we do break the $9 mark again. But I would also be in absolutely no way surprised if we come back down and test the low fives before that starts to happen. But this is all complete and utter speculation. This is just what I expect may happen. And remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Don't buy anything just because I speak of it. Always do your own research. What I want to show you now is their growth. Earnings growth last year, plus 89%. Earnings growth this year expected 1,000%. 550% absolutely mental but then we go to the earnings growth for the next five years five percent maybe there is a long-term outlook here then we have a look at CNN businesses forecasts for the next 12 months at a high it sees eight dollars so a 27% return a low negative 60% and the median negative 22% so they don't have the best you know even 12 month never mind very long-term outlook for this company Nats Q1 earnings are coming out on May 12th so they're coming out what in two weeks or so's time and I don't think this is gonna have the craziest effect on their stock in all honesty. What I think is gonna be a lot more important for their long-term outlook at the very least is their Q2 and Q3 earnings. These Q1s at best might give it, you know, a one day massive rise followed off by, you know, the second half of the day having a little bit of a dip. Similar to what we saw happen to Boeing. I think they went up 12, 13% and they finished the day up only 6%. I could definitely see something similar happen with Nat. If I was in these guys as a short-term investor, I would more than likely hold them regardless until these Q1 earnings came out and then decide what I would do. But I'm not a financial advisor. I didn't even buy these guys, so remember that. I don't want to lose anybody money out here, man. It's just my thoughts. Something that I want to say as well is Nat right now are making a lot, a lot of money. They're making a lot of money, and yesterday they went down close to 30% from the daily high. Let's look at a company like Carnival, who people have accepted could potentially go bankrupt, who are making no money, who yesterday went up 15%. The stock market right now doesn't make sense. It doesn't care about your logic. Please remember that. A company who's making an immense, immense amount of money went down an awful lot. And a company who is making no money went up an awful lot. Obviously companies such as Carnival, anybody in the travel industry, the large majority of companies really, did well yesterday because of the news that came out in regards to, you know, the virus vaccine. But it is just something interesting that I wanted to bring up, is that why is it that a company like Carnival is doing so, so well when they're making no money, and a company like Nat just had an absolutely terrible day when they're making an awful lot of money. Their price action has been all over the place. The volume they've been traded at has been immense compared to what they've seen in the past. There will be an awful, awful lot of volatility, whether it is going up or whether it is going down. Whichever direction you want it to go, there's going to be a lot of volatility. So please, please do be prepared for that. That is what I think of Nat as a whole, as of right now. Obviously, it's been an absolutely crazy week for Nat. I completely understand the appeal. I would not say it is a bad short-term investment by any stretch of the imagination, but it most certainly is not for me. If I thought that Carnival was too risky at $8, you can bet that I think these guys are too risky where they are right now. In my opinion, the growth potential is nowhere near as much as Carnival is. I would prefer buy Carnival at $16 than these guys at six. And you guys know how I feel about Carnival. If you want that really quick potential 10, 20, up as high as 50% return, yeah, it's offering you an absolutely fantastic opportunity. But just remember, with those fantastic opportunities, always come the higher risks. I'm not eating my words yet, I'm still standing by what I said, and I don't plan on investing in any oil tanker stocks, just because as a long-term investor, I don't think they offer me much long-term value. If I was a day trader, I'd be living the dream right now, and all I would be doing is I would be on Nat, and I would be on oil, and I'd be, you know, having a right time, but that's not me. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you watched till the end, thank you so much. You're helping me out more than you understand. I appreciate you so much. Please subscribe if you haven't just yet. Drop the video a like, and drop me a comment with your thoughts. I always love having a chat with you guys. So, until the next one, guys. Peace.